In this video, I'm going to be testing out this, a apparently portable oxygen injector. We'll see how well it works in replacement of an airbrush. So I picked this up from Timu or Temu or however it's pronounced. And it was after a suggestion someone made in one of the comments when I was talking about how an airbrush is like one of the best things you can pick up as a miniature painter. Someone suggested grabbing one of these, which is this like basically a more portable handheld airbrush that doesn't need a compressor. I'm not expecting great things for it. It's about 20 pounds. I don't think it's going to do a good job, but if it can take care of just all like the base coating, then that's a pretty nice thing to have. So my thoughts are that if this can replace the base coating stage of having to get the airbrush out, clean it all out and everything, that's a pretty big win. So in the box, you get some instructions. So the little kind of like handheld handle, USB-C charging as well, which is really handy, obviously in this day and age where you want everything to be the same sort of charger. That's just a nice to have. Um, oh, this must be the airbrushy bit. Come here. Oh, here we go. So a little airbrush as well. Feels pretty sturdy to be honest. I mean, all these bits on like the edge feel like they are plastic. Yeah, it's all plasticky. Um, maybe some kind of like metallic coating, but all in all, the trigger action feels good. Feels robust enough. I mean, I guess you don't push down, it's just pull back. There's no up and down push, but who? Okay, so one thing I just noticed is you've got this bit that you can twist on the back here and it only lets you pull the trigger back so far. That's quite nice. I don't know if that's. If you wanted to avoid overspraying, that could be quite handy to have. Right, so I guess the first thing to do is try it out. So the first thing I did is I grabbed some models and I decided I would prime them all black and then go for a white from above just to see whether or not I could get a Xenophil prime from this thing. Now, interestingly, it's got this like little knob on the back here and you can twist it and it lowers the amount of paint it's gonna be shooting or you can twist it the other way and it basically expands the amount of paint it's gonna be shooting. In theory, that's really good, but you kind of have to narrow it down quite a lot because what I found, because this compressor isn't able to basically pass that much air through this thing, it was given this spattery spiderweb look when I was first using it. So when I narrowed it down, it made a much more nice, consistent effect. So I managed to get all the black down and it got some really good coverage on there. It's very, very similar to using just a traditional airbrush, just with a lot less pressure. I let that layer dry and then I moved across onto the white and this is where I figured things would go terribly wrong. But to my surprise, it actually managed to do a decent enough Xenophil Prime. Like I mentioned, you do want to limit the amount of paint it's able to put through there because otherwise you get a lot of spider webbing. But the overall effect from this was actually pretty good and it gave me something that's, I guess, equivalent to using a rattle can to do a Xenophil Prime. So when it comes to using it for like just doing a standard base coat, this is actually really good. I'm really, really impressed with it. So a couple of things, I wouldn't want to use it on something that was much larger. So I did mention that I was going to try it on some larger prints and stuff like that. But when you open up the amount of paint that's going to be going through, the effect becomes really poor. So you'd be spray painting forever. It's not bad, but also as well, it probably would be better just to use a rattle can or a traditional airbrush. But talking about traditional airbrush, this basically is a traditional airbrush and it's just this compressor at the bottom here that is different. You can take this off, you could attach it just to a standard compressor and it's got all the parts you'd expect from an airbrush. And I don't know why when I bought this thing, I wasn't expecting that, but you have all the same things that you would need. So basically you can strip it all apart, you can take out the needle, you can remove all the bits, you can take the nozzle off and it's all in three parts. You can remove this tank here as well and you can get it all cleaned up. Obviously one thing to bear in mind if you are new to this and you haven't used an airbrush before, there's a few things you need to consider as well. Anytime you've used it, you wanna be cleaning out the cup. So make sure you look at some airbrush guides on how to do that. And after you finish using it, you do wanna take it apart and just give it a good clean. One thing to note is because it's constantly putting air through that, even when you're not spraying paint through it, it's gonna dry out the tip and like the nozzle very, very quickly. So whenever I wasn't actually spraying paint through it, I was actually turning off the compressor Eight, that saves a little bit of power, but also it stops it from drying out. So just a tip there for you. Another thing to note, even though it's USB-C, it's not created equal to other USB type C's here. You have to use a low power charger, which could be an issue depending on what sort of things you've got kicking around the house. Fortunately for me, I've got all sorts of old USBs that I was able to plug it into. But the key to this is it's charging when the red light comes on and it's fully charged when the green lights come on. If you plug it in and you don't see a light on there, it's not charging. Another couple of things as well is it's all plastic at the end here. So this kind of like end bit and like the, I guess the bit that holds the barrel and the needle and everything in place, that's all plastic. So over time it probably is gonna break. Also the other thing is it doesn't really put much air through it. It's, it's very low pressure, but you kind of expect that, but it is good enough to get some paint through and just do some base coats. So all in all, do I recommend this? And honestly, yes. 
I think this is actually a really handy device. If you haven't used an airbrush before and you're thinking about getting an airbrush, I reckon this is a pretty good step. I will probably use this a lot for base coating just because I'm constantly putting so much paint through it and doing a lot of models in one go, it tends to clog up my good airbrush. And I'd rather save my good airbrush for a lot of the more precision work rather than ruining it, just constantly doing base coats. The other good thing about this as well, if it is your first airbrush, you're gonna kill your first airbrush unless you're really, really careful. But the vast majority of people who get an airbrush will gunk it up. They won't necessarily know how to use it. This gives an inexpensive way just to try out an airbrush and murder it and use it and experiment with it. And then once you've kind of figured out, actually this is how you take it apart, this is how you clean it. And this is the thing I need to do to avoid breaking it. You've only spent something like 20 pounds or $20 wherever you are. I honestly think that's a pretty good first step if you're looking at getting an airbrush. Also compare this to buying loads of rattle cans. Again, a really inexpensive way. And I honestly think this gives me good enough results that get very close to a rattle can, if not a little bit better. And third, the fact that it's really portable, you can head on outside as well if you've got good weather. You don't have to have a dedicated station for doing all your airbrushing, because one thing to bear in mind about airbrushing is, although it's less messy than something like a rattle can, it gets bits of dust all over the place. So yeah, this is really handy. I really like this. It's probably not gonna last that long. I do wonder, is this gonna blow up in my hand as well? So if you see me in the future videos and I've only got one hand, well, maybe I don't recommend this anymore. So let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Have you got one of these? Are you thinking about getting one of these? Do you have any questions about one of these? I should probably stop smacking it just in case. But this bit does feel pretty solid, so it might not blow up, I, I don't know. But this is a weirdly good little device. I strongly recommend one, so yeah, give it a shot. Thanks for watching this video. Hope you've enjoyed. Hit the like and subscribe button. It's getting very hot in here right now and I'm starting to melt. So I will see you in the next one. Ta-ra!